Yo, konnichiwa bitches, it's Watch and Listen Podcast. This episode of the Watch and Listen Podcast is brought to you by Crown and Caliber, the number one place to buy a secondhand luxury watch on the internet. And unless you happen to have all dat access to get that hot new Rolex and paddock action, which like six people on earth have that, uh, you're going to want to buy pretty much all your luxury watches secondhand anyway. You get a lot more for your money that way, and Crown and Caliber eliminates the sketchiness of buying watches secondhand. You can you can trust them. They're a real business. They're real. It's a it's not a guy scamming on the internet. They have watchmakers in house. They have uh, technicians in house. Salespeople. Every watch you see uh, on their site, those photos are of that actual watch. Um, I have bought and sold many watches to Crown and Caliber in the last two years, and I have uh, I have been satisfied every single time. You can even sell them your watch. You can trade them your watch. You want to trade up, trade in, trade out. Crown and Caliber has you covered. Uh, go to crownandcaliber.com, check out their inventory, and use code WL150. That's WL150. That'll get you an additional $150 off your first watch purchase at Crown and Caliber. Love it. We're also brought to you by Beeline Coffee. I drink it every morning. It is absolutely delicious. I got my own roast over there. The roasted tire, we're on version 3.0 now. Um, it is automotive-themed coffee, which would be dumb if the coffee wasn't actually incredible. The coffee itself is some of the best coffee I've ever tasted anywhere in the world, and I am a coffee nerd and a coffee snob at the same time, and I love it. Go to BeelineCoffee.com and use code CHRONO, C-H-R-O-N-O, to get 15% off your entire order, no matter how big or how small. Righto. Uh, on this episode of Watch and Listen, uh, my man Joe Kirk is in the studio, and Joe Kirk is the man at Grand Seiko. He uh, he has worked his way up to corporate level status over there from uh, from a salesman at the store in the boutique, which is where I met him, and he helped me really get uh, interested in Grand Seikos. Um, and this guy has so much knowledge uh, about the product, the history, everything, and he's got the case. He's got the case from Basel World, so we have like a half a million dollars of brand new Grand Seikos we're talking about in studio. Uh, you'll also notice right away that Cameron is not in studio with us today. We are sad about that, but we have not fired him. Rest assured, we have not fired him. Uh, he, we explain in the show where he is and when he's coming back. It's the Watch and Listen Podcast. What's up, folks? It's the Watch and Listen podcast. Welcome back. I am uh, I'm really excited to do this show because I get to talk about one of my favorite brands with one of the people that helped me get into that brand, and uh, conversely, or, or or thusly, or whatever the fucking <laughs> word is that goes there, watches in general. Uh, my man Joe Kirk is in the house. What's Matt. happening, man? Dude, all good. Uh, in town to do a bunch of events. And You're in town to do the watch time. Watch right? time and and a few others. So we're uh, scattered pretty much all over Southern California right now, and and getting Basel intros into people's yeah. hands for the first time. It's really exciting. Yeah, dude. So Joe is my my Grand Seiko connect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the man, the man with the case. That's um, right. A few uh, today. You were working at the Seiko Boutique in Miami in 2017. Yes. June 2017. Absolutely. When my my friend Chef Carl Ruiz, who's been on the show, said, when you're in Miami, go to this store. And I went in there and I walked out of there with this Grand Seiko that I love wearing. Yes. That you sold me. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, and a very rare one at that. I found out later, like... You didn't tell me when I was in the store <laughs> that it was rare. You were just like, what do you want to look at? And I just put shit on. And I put on a big pusher chronograph, which is a really iconic Grand Seiko piece, which you're wearing. And we have, we have, see, you, dude, Joe brought a fleet of fucking watches. Yes. Uh, we've got one of those to show. Um, but I ended up with this, and I found out later 
that it's like crazy rare. Like an executive, when they came over to open the Beverly Hills store, was like, where did you get that? <laughs> why do I have it? What was it doing in your store? So uh, there was there was only oh, me, like literally a couple of by pieces the way, the, in uh, the, the States. Pouch, this pouch was just indicating where we put watches for, oh, the, great. for the watch cam. So here's my my grande secos. So wait, so why, what what is this what is this watch and how did I end up with it? Just a schmuck from L.A. So there's only a couple of these that ended up in the boutiques in the United States. Uh, they made it exclusive in Japan for a very short period of time. It was like maybe one to two years in production. It's so rad. Yeah, it's awesome. It's got the sapphire crystal bezel. It's got uh, all you know like. If you don't need a GMT, this is the only spring drive chronograph we've ever made without a GMT. You see the on the top of this little camera here, Joe. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a. Make, can you make hit the darker button to make it a little darker? Is uh, the I think it's that. Yeah, Cameron usually does it. Oh, we should mention. <laughs> so, there we go. A little more. A little more. A little more. There it is. Perfect. That's what it is. So, uh, so Cameron, <laughs> not here today. Um, why <laughs> is I'm sorry for Joe that Cameron's not here today because because we want to I want to introduce them, but. So I got married last weekend in New York. It was and awesome. And congrats again. Thank you very much. It was great fun. My wife and I are very happy. Everything was awesome. Like It was beautiful. Um, Cameron fucking drove there, <laughs> which we're in California. It's a, it was in New York. He oh, drove there that. in New York in his homemade Sprinter van. As a matter of fact, let me see his, uh, his Instagram and see what he's... Uh, what's his, that, uh, that is a long drive. Yeah, I so really him... Surprised. But, dude, him, his wife... Uh, Whitney, his oh, oh they, they have baby. they're not. Why aren't they doing any Instagram? Him, his wife, his new baby. There's no Instagram happening. It's an Instagram blackout. I don't get it. I don't know why. A uh, road trip with a baby. I've done recently and, and two uh, German shepherds and two German shepherds. Okay, and yeah. so they drove from L.A. to the wedding, camped the whole way. Didn't you know? We're at the wedding. It was great to have them. And then they're gonna. They drove back. Except I called him like three days ago, like, hey, man, are you back yet? Because it's like, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's uh, nowhere near back. Wow. And so okay. you were only here for the one day, and so I, I made it a point to do it. Well, Even without you. Cameron. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry I didn't get to meet him. He's I, the man. Uh, I was looking forward to it, but you know yeah. what? There will well, be you, another opportunity. For sure. Here. So, um, Grand Seiko. Um, I got lucky and ended up with a rare one, but... Very much so. But... Uh, it be quickly has become one of my favorite brands. The the give me um I I did some history shit. We can go through some of it. Some of the more iconic ones. Grand Seiko themselves actually have like a one of the best history sections on their website awesome. with really good um imagery and descriptions of basically every important watch they made. Yeah. So we can go through some of that. Their history is actually quite short. It's uh my dad is older than the company. <laughs> 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 um. So, but but real quick, like you've been with the brand, you were in the store, you're now at corporate in Jersey wearing the suit and the pin, looking yeah. good. Double yeah, I fisting. only I only brought suits, so like I wanted to come casual today, but it just it wasn't no, in the look, cards. You look good, homie. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it, you know, I, I did break out. I kept the shell toes. I know for the it, shell toes. Are, they do it. That's <laughs> that's how California works. That's like, right. No suit is too fancy for either a Puma suede or an Adidas shell toe. That's right. Right. Absolutely. So what is what is what is it that makes Grand Seiko like so special? Well, you know, I mean, everyone kind of knows Seiko, right? Uh, and Grand Seiko, without question, obviously, is born from Seiko. So, you know, in, in 1960, they launched Grand Seiko to be the ultimate, right? Yeah. It's, it's the best practical watch that they could possibly make. And it's sort of like the ethos of, like, for car people, like Icon. You know Icon, Jonathan Ward? You know him? He no. builds these trucks, and he basically takes, like, old Broncos and old um, Toyota FJs and stuff like that and completely disassembles them and remanufactures them with the most durable, bulletproof, best-made product he could possibly find, and it doesn't matter how much it costs to get or make. Yeah. Okay, so then yes, that's uh, that's that. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, roughly that. So you know, I mean, the the whole principle behind the brand is to make you know I, accuracy is is one of our key components. That's number one is accuracy. But then from there, I mean, durability, longevity, you know, and, and being practical, like telling time. I mean, just yeah. really easy to read. Yeah, know, that's what it's all about. They don't go overboard with gimmicks. Like they've not gone down like the 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 Richard Meal rabbit hole or the the crazy like experimental stuff. They keep it pretty conservative. But what I found interesting was um, there were uh, uh, nine enduring elements 
of the Grand Seiko style. And I found yes. the list, and it was beginning in 1967, so I think it would have been... I found the actual list, but I'll just I'll give you the list. Here we go. Uh, and every pretty much every Grand Seiko watch, and now that I'm looking at the collection, I believe, uh, follows this. Okay, ready? The double width indexes at 12. Pick a ran- Let's pick a random watch from this year. Here's the principles from 67. Pick a random from this year. Let's go with the hand wind. Hand wind? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, oh my god, this is incredible. Okay, put that up, put that down here. Yeah, keep in mind these these were just announced at Basel, so this is uh, these are all prototypes, and they're it, very rough prototypes at that. Like this is going to have a blued steel second hand in the final product. This uh, sample, unfortunately, does not have that, but um, and unfortunately, there's no movement in it either. But uh, yeah, never double mind. wide index. I I uh, I we will okay <laughs> disclaimers. Prototypes. Yes. We are here. We are there. There for aesthetic purposes, really only. Yeah, it's point. like to try it on, get a vibe, and, gotcha. and, and that's it. But okay. yeah. nevertheless, the principles should apply, right? Of course. Okay. The double width indices at the twelve o'clock position. Check. Check. <laughs> uh, a multifaceted uh, rectangular markers. Absolutely. Check. Uh, a highly polished bezel. Check. This one's kind. I mean, it is highly well, polished, yeah. but then they hand carve it. So. Yeah, this one's unique because it's got carving. But pretty much now that I'm looking over the rest of the collection here, all of them with a couple rare. I may have picked the wrong one for that, but all the rest of them do have a highly polished bezel or a sapphire bezel. Yep, I call that a pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, a two dimensional polished surface case. Yes, hmm, I think that's a yes, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, including our new one. Totally. Uh, a half recessed crown. This one is not quite as recessed as some of the other ones. So, um, hmm. at the time in the '60s, and indeed up through, look, here's 1988, and my watch has a half recessed crown. So some of them still do. Yeah, but I guess they got past it at some point, huh? Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. You know, in 2017, we announced Grand Seiko as its own independent brand, right? right? And so a lot of a lot of that is imp- implementing new designs. So this watch, as an example that we're looking at, is a hand-wound dress piece. So the crown needs to be easily accessible. Right. And this is the, the practical aspect of Grand Seiko. But this grammar of design, this, this design trait that was developed in 1967 mm-hmm. for Grand Seiko, I mean, it, vast majority, Yeah, it's going to apply. Yeah, like if there's nine elements, I would say that you could probably find like maybe six in each watch, right? Oh, it, it, or, yeah, it may, at least. or more. Like you know, the diff- here's where you know uh, Aston Martin. Aston mm-hmm. Martin designs their cars in the rule of thirds, right? Yeah. So the it's the ratio of length to height, and the ratio of the size of the window to the size of the door, and then the ratio of the you know what I mean yeah, of like yeah, yeah. the belt line to the roof line, and and you can go. That's why, like, a lot of Aston Martins look the same. It's yeah. because they are required to follow this ratio pretty closely. And they're so beautiful. And, yeah, they figured out <laughs> a ratio that works, and so they have they, they decided to sort of stick with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So Grand Seikos are pretty much, like, the best versions of Seiko. What, wait, what makes them made differently? What's Because they're made in a separate facility, right? Yes. New pe- different people. Yeah, so uh, essentially we have these two small studios. We've got one in northern Japan in a city called Morioka, mm-hmm. and then we have another one in uh, the city of Shiojiri, which is in Nagano, very central Japan. And uh, each one has their kind of their own responsibilities, right? And inside these kind of big facilities where we make other watches too, we have these little tiny studios. And this is what m- separates Grand Seiko. You know, very highly skilled craftsmen and women. Uh, every- everyone's doing everything by hand. And, it, you know, you ever see it, I mean, you're going to be amazed at, like, one guy does one thing. I imagine it the f- going to the factory and you go and take a tour. Can you take tours? Can you can you go in or anything? We 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 do tours, but they're not like readily uh, open to uh-huh. the public because you know product development, translation. Right. You know, I mean, if you come from the U.S. and you know, you right? But see like, I've, I've been to Switzerland and taken like tours of watch factories before. Like, yeah, I didn't yeah. like line up and buy a ticket, but we, I, we, me and some friends arranged for tours. Like, it was possible. It, it's possible. Yeah. Yes, I so. imagine it's one of those things where if you do it, you end up giving them all your money like <laughs> you leave you know there what I mean? you leave there and your uh your wallet is uh you know yeah. ready to be emptied quickly. well because a watch like you know a watch it's like you look at it and you go okay do i like how it looks am i impressed with what it does but like beyond 
that, it's not like it doesn't offer you the sensations of a car or even a bicycle. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. so you have to get behind the story. You have to get behind you know the thing that they do. And so for a lot of what makes Grand Seiko special, you. You can see it, but you have to look pretty close because it's in these very fine details. Yeah. So what are some of the what are some of the crazy like the the best details that you can think of that are like like the the snowflake dial maybe? Yeah, and I mean what we're looking at um, okay. under under your uh, yep. lens here, this is a new iteration, let's say, of the snowflake. I mean, this is one of the most meticulously made pieces that we've ever done. So the the case is going to be in platinum nine fifty. The Zeratsu polish it, and you know people who are fans of Grand Seiko love the word Zeratsu. Yeah, it, what is what is Zeratsu? Zeratsu is essentially it's a polishing. Uh, technically, it's the actual wheel that they're using, but uh, Zeratsu, let's say, is a a method of hand polishing. I need a better image than that. Continue. Yeah, sorry. But uh, you know, essentially, what the what the end goal is, and it can only be done by hand. We have very few craftsmen uh, who actually are capable of doing this, especially in Grand Seiko cases, because they're so complex, so highly fast and many of them have very flat surfaces. Um, so they have to s essentially sit there and grind it till it's a perfect mirror. Mm. And uh, depending on the metal, depending on you know the design, these become super, super labor intensive. So the, the I think the uh, sorry, the uh, um, result of it is that so in my experience, like my Grand Seiko doesn't have any loom. And in fact, do any Grand Seikos have any loom? Do these new ones have loom? In our sport collection, oh, we, have, okay. we have watches with loom. So That's mine much it. doesn't, but the fat, the polish is so high that if you're in a mostly dark place with just a hint of light, you can actually still read it. Yeah, and I mean, this is a, a kind of like a tr traditional Japanese aesthetic. Right there's always you know on the angled edges of our hands and markers there's always light on one side and there's always shadow on another so it's always contrasting the dial yeah and then we do different surface finishings for the the flat part on top I saw one of the sickest pictures on like Reddit watches where it was it, it the light the light was reflecting off the dial in such a way that it was bouncing off the underside of the hands which were yeah. polished and reflecting the underside of the hands back on the dial like the reflections that come off a grand seiko like if it's a sunny day you can like you can do the little thing where you make a, a crazy ref like you can make a whole clock on the wall basically yeah i know and it's <laughs> it, it, it it drove me crazy when i bought my first grand seiko i was seeing a reflection you know I, the first one that i that i really uh, got to was the snowflake so tell me the snowflake is probably the most oh, man i I switched the hot keys for the other camera. I'm sorry, people. I'm fucking retarded. Ah, <laughs> the snowflake good, is good. probably the most uh, recognizable uh, modern Grand Seiko. Tell me uh, all about it, because when I came into your store, I was almost certain that I was going to walk out of there with a snowflake. Yeah. So tell me about it. So, you okay. know, I mean, the, the snowflake is really a tribute to the hometown of where it's made. They're winters, right? And these are made in, in Nagano Prefecture in Japan, very famous for, you know, it's like the Japanese Alps. People go there to go skiing and snowboarding. Famous for the Olympics. That too. Yeah, and 98 the Olympics Winter there, Olympics yeah. were there. But, um, you know, the dial's made to mimic the snowfall after it's been carved out by the wind. They use uh, high-intensity titanium as their own titanium alloy. Uh, to what make it, it a... What's it actually uh, made of, that dial material? The Oops. dial material, I mean, the under... <laughs> I, I hit print <laughs> instead of fucking zoom. Well, I'm sorry. you know, you hang it on oh the wall or something. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> if, you, if you zoom in really close, you can see it looks like the snow, not freshly fallen, like after a wind has blown it overnight. Exactly. It is the shit. <laughs> it is the mo one of the most fire dials made in the history of watchmaking yeah like you could they, you could say grand seiko could probably if they were the that type of company spin off an entire snowflake the snow themed you know line we we kind of have this year well we're, they have the blue one now right so we introduced the blue one yeah let me get a picture of the blue one because the blue one is pretty rad oh is this it yeah no no the, uh, it, it? yeah do a uh, search for it's sbga 407 can I, I hate all reference numbers. Can I just yeah. say that? All reference numbers are the worst. Is that it? Yeah. It's that's, a lovely. That's the one. On, let me, let that's me. That's time and type picture. It looks good. Man. This okay. one? This one here? Yeah. They take okay. nice photos. 
All right, this thing is. Oh, look at that! So sky blue dial instead of the instead of the pure white kind of uh, symbolizes the the sky behind the mountains in in central Japan in Nagano. So yeah, everything's inspired by some like weather nature. well weather oh. element around the mountain. Like it's like I guess people just stare out the window and look at the weather and then they literally <laughs> you can. I mean, like it, you you know you're in our northern factory. You look out the window and all, what do you see? You see Mount Iwate, yeah. which is another great dial that we make that you know doesn't have. Uh, Let's say the the recognition of the snowflake, yeah. but I mean, and I'm wearing one now. The the Mount Iwate dial. Is oh, like, throw that under the under the camera. Let's this, have a look at it. This thing's spectacular. What is the Mount Iwate dial about? So it's got little ridges on the dial, and it's going to be hard to see. The black one is very uh, subtle, but we also make it in a white dial, and then we just came out with a, a blue one that I unfortunately don't have a sample. That's steel today. or titanium? This one uh, is steel. Let me see, can I see the weight of that thing? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, my kingdom, the reason I... Oh, it's perfect. The reason I didn't buy the Snowflake is because I like a little weight on my watch, and I get it. It light as a Snowflake, titanium, yep. but I and I know it's... I know titanium's not cheap, but that the weight of titanium feels a little cheap to me. Yeah. I'm my kingdom for a steel Snowflake. It... it takes getting used to now this one with the blue is going to be in stainless steel case uh what we call our elegance collection case design um and we do make actually a bracelet that fits it so if you know you really get the itch it can be done i like that it can be done yeah this is this is always nice those are great okay so um the tell me about um vertical integration yes that's uh something i talk about a lot well it's something that makes (laughs) grand seiko i think is it is it a fully unique? Grand, is anyone else as vertically integrated as Grand Seiko? You know, that's. I mean, that's that's hard to say. I'm. Uh, I, I can really. You know, it's not not so much, uh, and maybe not as long. Yeah. But you know, there's there's certainly you know a small handful of companies that are vertically integrated. But what's nice, you know, is we do everything. You know, it's like we have we have our own hairspring, mainspring. We make all of our own. Uh, I mean, we grow quartz crystal in house, which is pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, and you know, it's so nerdy of me, but that's what I am. You know, I'm a huge watch. Nerd. I wonder what does it look like to <laughs> grow quartz crystal. I want to. I'm interested to see what that process. Like, if I Google image what that looks like, like what does that come up with? Yeah, let's see. I'm not seeing anything. See anything that looks? If I, if I, no, because you see the natural. I mean, it pulls up a lot of natural. Here we go. Oh, this monochrome. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, it's a big. It's a big. Well, frankly, it looks like a big quartz dildo. Um, (laughs) I mean, oh, that's not the right. Uh, there. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah. So this is so uh, cool. This is actually a a picture from Seiko uh, manufacturer. That we grow these quartz crystals in house, right? So we Whoa, essentially. This is, so this thing is like this quartz crystal is like the size of a uh, one liter soda bottle. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. How many watches will that serve? Oh man, that's a good like question. a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, in terms of what the the yield is out of this one crystal for Grand Seiko products, yeah. is is low. You know, I mean, uh, it's not like uh, all all tuning forks that are cut from this big block yeah, yeah. are not, let's say, created o- equally. Only the sick, only the, the fi- yeah, the good ones. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's like when you, uh, you know, you have uh, the shotgun manufacturers, you know, you can only use little bits of the wood. My dad's got this old shotgun. Yeah. And the wood in the stock, it's yep. not, it's not old, I'm sorry. It's from a company that's been around since like the 1700s, but it's a new gun. And gotcha. you can only, the wood they use is from a Turkish walnut, but only the roots and only the roots that are between like four and eighteen feet of depth yeah, are. It's fucking that crazy. Yeah, that's some that's nerdy amazing. tree shit. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> and that's I mean essentially what this is. You know, you have uh, you know you can get you know quite a few little tiny tuning forks out of this thing, but then you know for all Grand Seiko products that have a quartz crystal in them, they age them. So it's kind of like wine or whiskey is the way I like to explain it, right? You you age it for three months, for 90 days, and uh, you essentially eliminate all the irregularities in performance. So, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's refining it, just like you would have like a high-aged whiskey, which you, you know I'm a, yeah. a, a big whiskey guy. But um, you gave, You've given me two good bottles of whiskey. In no, fact, it the, won't be the, the last, the, I'm sure. Uh, remember the <laughs> EY you gave me yeah. last time? So I liked the Iwai so much that I served that at my wedding. 
Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's awesome. We, so we, we did. We had a case of it delivered, and we served it at the bars at my wedding. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So the... We went down... A, we were about to go down a quartz rabbit hole, though, which leads me to, you know, one of the... the to a watch fan, a general watch fan, one of the strangest phenomenons out there, which is that Grand Seiko sells fucking super expensive quartz watches. Oh, what yeah. is the deal with this? Well, the way I like to explain it is that this is really, I mean, the only quartz watch that I can think of that's engineered to perform more like a mechanical watch. Like, it's it's very focused on minimizing the electronic aspect. So this uh, this little bridge at the bottom, this little panel, is the this, only this place... This gold piece we're looking at here? Yeah, the, only the lower part. Under that is where your crystal oscillator is and your integrated circuit is. That's essentially the electronics of the watch. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else is gears and, and even springs. We use a hairspring in there. Um, but it's not in the traditional sense. What is, I mean, do you, you know, as someone who was actually in the, cause I'm, I'm always like, I just, I, I get that. I get that Grand Seiko and, and others in the past with the, the beta 21 and whatnot, like, yeah, yeah. you know, have tried to make, uh, really good quartz watches and in many cases have, you know, really succeeded in, in but you know, do you. What is the? Is there really a uh, a market for a, a five thousand dollar or more quartz watch? Definitely. They, I mean, you and, sell a lot of them. Yeah, we do really well with the quartz, and you know, I mean, it's, is it because uh, people have one watch that they just never want to mess with, or do you sell them to? Are there collectors of quartz as well? There are certainly collectors of quartz, and you know, I mean, it's really about performance and, and precision, right? Because the quartz that that we have in Grand Seiko starts at ten seconds a year accuracy, goes to five. Right. So, how much more do you have to pay for five seconds a year accuracy than ten? Not seconds? Not that much really? more. But okay. you know, the problem with the five seconds is we don't have. Uh, they're always limited editions. Oh, you know yeah. that we don't. Uh, the, it, it can't be produced on the same scale, even as the ten second per year. Um, which we don't, you know, I mean, that's realistically compared to other quartz watches. I mean, you can make, you know, a, a quartz movement in a second with a robot and, uh, yeah, and a lot yeah. of plastic, typically. These are all hand assembled. These are done by hand by craftsmen. It's, I mean, this this is my favorite. The, was, what's this one called? This is uh, the Quartz GMT for the 25th anniversary of this caliber. So the 9F Quartz uh, 25th anniversary. I fucking love this watch. It's I, great. I this watch is this is one of the best looking sport watches I think to come out in the last ten years. It's got just the right amount splash of yellow yeah. on a gray and matte silver. Do I have to say out loud that it's got a Explorer Two knockoff bezel? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I've, I, I've, <laughs> I'm a I've heard huge that Explorer Two fan. So as a huge Explorer Two fan, I think that's a great design. Like I'm not bothered by it, but I think it, this watch takes some elements of other watches and assembles them in a way that I think is really cool. Yeah, Looks and I awesome. mean, you know, I always, you know, I always look back and you know, because I used to collect a lot of different brands. And, you know, I'm real familiar with the history of Glycine. Glycine in the 50s, when they had the first Airman, had this yeah. same style of font, too. So there's a lot of brands that have utilized this font. But, and also, uh, the, you know, uh, we, we know what's most, you know, known. That, that goes without <laughs> saying. But, no, that's, uh, a, that's, a re- that's such a great looking watch, man. I like. How much is that thing? Uh, this one is uh, 3,500. Man, and uh, in five seconds of your accuracy. So the little star above the six o'clock marker means, uh, you know, five points of the star means five seconds. Oh, really? Accuracy. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. So is that that has the best version of the quartz movement? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, that's cool. our that's our highest accuracy quartz. I mean, thirty five hundred bucks for the best of something that looks that good. It's not you that know, bad. It's not right? bad. No. If you were a one watch person and you wanted to just put it on and not think about it for the next five years. That's probably a, a good place to start. Yeah, and that's a lot of the customer that's buying these, you know, these high end or high accuracy quartz. You know, it's really about the performance. Um, the other thing I love about our quartz movement, though, is like this is a this is a movement that's not replaced, right? It's engineered to last multiple generations. Yeah, I guess that's true, right? So they Most quartz is like throw away, but you actually, it's how, what does a service look like on this quartz? So uh, service in terms in terms of price. I mean, yeah, in terms of price and in terms of like, you know, what do you do other than change the battery? Do you have to re-lubricate the whole gear train and everything? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Assemble it? Yeah, so there's a, a special design, though, for the gear train. They call like a super sealed or super shielded cabin. So, Oh, yeah, wait, no, it has a great, yeah, where did that name, that name came from somewhere else in the history? Oh, 1993, yeah, the, the world's most 9F. accurate quartz, the 9F. It had some great taglines. It was so Japanese 
90s. Yeah. Like the same way they named Japanese cars like the weirdest shit ever. So <laughs> these were the these were these were features in the first 9F that I got off the history. Uh the backlash auto adjust, which yeah. is pretty normal. The twin pulse control. Yes. What is that? So that means that the the second hand when it moves, uh-huh. you know, if you if you're looking at the watch, you're never going to see it. But if you take a video in slow motion, yeah. the second hand actually moves twice. Oh. And this is to increase the torque. So it, quartz watches have almost half of the torque of a mechanical watch. Okay. Not 9F. Yeah. 9F has, it, that's why it has big, heavy metal hands. Huh. So the second hand is about three times heavier than you would find in, in a quartz watch typically. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, they're really, you know, they when they developed this movement, it was really yeah. to, to hit all the fine points of a mechanical watch. Watch that quartz lacked. Yeah, and then instant date change was the other one. Yeah, so an instantaneous date has never been done on a quartz watch. That's really is it always has there been a sweeping date in the past? What so the, yeah, the date just has a really slow engagement. But in in nine F, it's actually just like a mechanical one, um, where spring tension builds up, and then uh, oh. it, for for ours we have a window of between twelve midnight and twelve o five. It will flash to the next date uh, at one, you know, in one two thousandth of a second. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, and it also helps with the, you know, that window of, like, you're changing the date. Yeah, yeah, you want the tick, 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 you know, the click over of it. And then, as you said, the best named thing ever, the super sealed cabin. (laughs) Like, Rolex has an oyster, but no, we have the super sealed cabin. Yep, so that, basically what that is, is there's no, there's no, like, gasket in it, Uh but um, it's it's utilizing uh, the main plate and then a special bridge design underneath and then the bridge on top and it's kind of sandwiching it so there's no du- like when you change the battery right you, typically dust will get into the gear train or something like that that'll fudge it up along the way um, it's basically preventing that so this way the lubricant has a much longer lifespan hmm. and so you know theoretically I mean it can go a very 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 long time before it needs an actual overhaul like an, an actual like a service. service yeah but you know, three year battery. I mean, that's you know, no no big deal. But yeah. actually, servicing. The if you watch, open it to change the battery, do you are you now not super sealed anymore? No, that's not uh, that's not the case for the movement. It's only if you oh. take that uh, that middle bridge that has oh, all the well, jewels. The in super it. sealed cabin is not just the, is not the case. That's inside the movement. It's just that one oh. panel right in the middle of the movement. Oh, okay. Cool. So yeah, it's. I mean, it's, and uh, what's kind of neat is it. You know, I got to take one of these things apart. And when I saw how complex the movement was, I mean, there's, you know, starting around 137 parts in this quartz movement. I want to see if I can get a disassembled photo. Yeah, that that might be hard to find. But yeah, if I add the word disassembled to Google, that won't do it. <laughs> Is that it? No. 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 Oh, here. No, that's not no. a quartz movement. I don't know. All right, you're right. That might be harder than I think. Yeah, I yep. mean, adding uh, the word disassembled doesn't really help much. Sorry. You know where you can find it is if you look on uh, on my Instagram stories. I have uh, the the disassembled quartz movement. Oh. So yeah, nine F quartz right, right there. there. Oh, here we go. Wait, hang on. Let's see. So this is a sample that was in the uh, Miami boutique. So it's you know it's very uh, dusty and scratched up and stuff like that. But the scratches mostly came from me tinkering with it because I'm yeah. not a very good watchmaker at all. But you're a good watch salesman, though. You're a good representative. That's why you're wearing a suit right now, not a fucking loop. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I got to try and look professional. You know, it's a, uh, I'm not very good at it, but you know. Yeah, no, your counterpart <laughs> in my, on my East Coast, Harry at Manfredi's, he's the watchmaker oh, slash yeah. I'm gonna salesman. Be there. You know, Harry? I'm going to be there in, uh, in, yeah. in uh, next, maybe I'm, next weekend. I'm sorry to Crown and Caliber. I know they have an exclusive, but thank you. Shout out to Harry at Manfredi's, that dude in Greenwich. If you want to see some baller ass, Ass watches in a store, Manfredi's in Greenwich is what's up. This is uh, going to be my first visit there, so I look forward to it. You will love. That's my hometown. You will love it. Awesome. So yeah, here's you disassembling quartz. Yeah. So that, it really does, uh, you know, other than the obvious hole for the battery, it really does pretty strongly resemble a real movement. Yeah, no, it's in like everything's made of metal. It's not, uh, you know, it's not plastic. There's some insulation in there, which there has to be. But uh, you know, you have your quartz oscillator, your integrated circuit. And that's, I mean, that's the electronics. So that little panel right there is all, you know, essentially what you what you're looking at in terms oh, there of you electronics. Go. I, this is a nice educational Instagram story, but that's you, you know, know, I mean, that's kind of what I what I do with yeah, Instagram nowadays. You jo, know, uh, Joe's a uh, a really good uh, is a really good follow on Instagram. It's Josep 
J O S E P dot Kirk K I R K. Yeah, they, someone had the had the one with the H in it, so I couldn't take it. Motherfucker! No, it's it drives and you nuts. look, and I mean, and the un, in your header, you really look like a man with a case full, I, of, full of something. I'm very confused, <laughs> and I, you know, that's uh, I want to express who I really am. Yeah. <laughs> um, spring drive. So spring drive. Uh, spring drive. Um, we have discussed it on the show before um, in passing, never in super great detail. Um, you have. You, you ex- want detail? I can. Uh, no, we don't have to. Do, no, I, I think for for the for the casual interested enthusiast, we were not not a, not an engineer. Yeah, yeah. What uh, someone walking into your store and says, he sees spring dial on spring drive on the dial of all these watches. Joe, what is a spring drive? Why do I give a shit about it? The spring drive. I mean, it's uh, it's basically a, a mechanical watch with quartz accuracy. That's how really- can you have that? It's uh, about 30 years, uh, almost 30 years, 28 years before uh, it was put into continuous production. So this year we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Spring Drive, which is, uh, you know, a huge milestone. But the first ones to come out were hand wound. They were limited edition, only sold in Japan. So that's the anniversary we're celebrating this year. But, um, you know, I mean, it's really a miraculous movement because it really in the escapement aspect of a Spring Drive, there's like no collision. There's uh, no friction. Essentially, there's no you know there's there's no real uh, oscillation that's 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 shown. So everything moves smooth. Everything moves one way. Everything is much easier than uh, let's say the tension that you would find in a typical mechanical watch. That's you know. Uh, there's no like banging. Nothing, there's no banging. It yeah. makes no noise. You yeah. Know? Nothing moves back. And, and then if you and the the best is the chronographs. It, I mean, you know, they talk, you people talk about the higher the beat rate, the smoother your sweep. Yeah. Like, there's this is a game over sweep. It would be like saying, comparing supercars and saying, okay, well, uh, the Ferrari F430 shifts in 100 milliseconds, whereas the Lamborghini Huracan shifts in 60 milliseconds, whereas the McLaren 720 shifts in 40 milliseconds, whereas the spring drive is a Tesla. There's no shifting. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's pretty much. How it works. So there, there is, there is no, there's no disruption of the movement. It's just continuously smooth. Yet, if you look in the back, like here, we'll use this one. This is a better one. This is a really special one. Okay, everyone wants to see this watch. Okay, what do you got? Just to show you the dial real quick. Wait, we're gonna have to make it probably a little darker because the dial is very flat. Yeah, the glows right. The other way, darker. No, this, I mean this is, is I'm hitting a negative. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, yeah, I can put my, I can put a shade over it there. Yeah. These so Creedor is a is pretty inside baseball if you don't know watches and you're probably looking at this going well what what am I looking at it's a it's a a, a silver case it's a it's a white dial and it's very simple there's not much to it. What? Why do I care about this? So Creator is, I mean, the reason you haven't heard of it really, I mean, and most people haven't heard of it, I should say, is because it's really only supposed to be sold in Japan. Um, we occasionally get some of these really special, what we call masterpieces, uh, which are made you know, by the same people, essentially, that are making some of these new Grand Seikos, uh, like the 8-Day, which I also brought. I brought tons of great yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk about Basil in a second. Yeah, but but uh, So this Creator, it was, you know, it's been around for a little bit. The uh, dial is is pure London porcelain, and it, the logo is painted by hand. The markers are like painted by the hand. The twelve straight lines are perfect. Are hand painted? Yes, so hand it, painted. So if you if you are capable of looking close enough, which we're unfortunately not doing capable of on this show, this is why I put it down. Oof. Yeah, that, there's there's a what lot are, to be said about this. All right, what are we looking at at the back of this? Because that's a very pretty display back. Yeah, so this is uh, you know this is a very small team in Japan, in central Japan, in Nagano again, but different studio than what makes like the regular series of Grand Seiko. Uh, they call it the Micro Artist Studio. So very small team. They hand finish everything so meticulous. Uh, try not to touch the table because oh. I'm zoomed way in and I'm trying to keep it from getting shaky so people don't I'm, go nuts. I'm off it. No, no, it's cool. I just want to show if I'm really zoomed in. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's, we were talking about spring drive. I derail easy. So sorry. That's okay. But uh, what you're looking at now is where you would see a wheel rocking back and forth, the balance wheel. The wheel is only going one way, right? 
it's completely smooth. There is no oscillation in that wheel whatsoever. So there is no other watch that can express time the same way that spring drive does. And that's because of this special, uh, what I like to call an escapement system. Uh, we call a trisynchro regulator. Um, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's ingenious watchmaking. So this one you're so seeing... So this is a hand-wound spring drive. Yes. And this one has a 60-hour power reserve, which was, you know, typically in spring drive, you could only get to about 48 hours in a hand-wind. Flip it back over real quick. Let's see the dial again. Let's yeah. see if, we, if we're zoomed in. Maybe we can see the hand. It has a, probably a tough time focusing on the white, actually. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Yeah. These are, like, if, you, if I see you on the street with one of these, like, you are the king of the world. Because I, I don't think I've ever seen one just out. It's what not, does this thing go for? It's not normal, too. What does it cost? This one is 52500 <sighs> Yeah. But is that platinum? Platinum yeah. 950 on this one. We also make in rose gold, which is 42000 <sighs> Do you have that one? Oh, yeah, is yeah. That that? Oh, I actually think the rose gold is hot on that. That rose gold is nice. It's crazy because I thought I was always going to only love the platinum, and then I saw the rose gold in person, and I was like, oh. I think that, is, that works really nicely. So These they, things, this is like a... This is... A, this is a watch like Grand Seiko for me means invisible pimping. Like (laughs) you are wearing something that's really expensive and really well made, and you could wear it for twenty years and no one will ever ask you about it. And like there are, I think that's a very like Japanese thing, you know, subtle under the radar, um, and it fits a lot of people's you know lifestyle. I think it's fitting for me that I attempted to buy a very flashy one and it, <laughs> and it's also very consistent for me that it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but, you know, a lot of people call it stealth wealth, right? You yeah, you buy no. it because you love it. You, well, and people you know. like to drive sleepers too. People Absolutely. like to debadge their cars. People yeah. like to put big ass engines in cars that don't look like anything and, you know, and 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 take people's money, you know. There's a there is that's I think what this brand um does particularly well. Yeah. Um, so spring drive, do you consider it mechanical or do you consider it not mechanical? I, I consider it mechanical, but you know, it's, uh, it does have a, an electronic side to it. Yeah. But what I love about it is that the electronic side of it is so little that it's virtually non-existent. Like everyone on earth would have to power, you know, wear a spring drive watch to basically power like a, just over 150 watt light bulb. Yeah. So that's seven and a half billion people. Not a know? lot of power. Yeah. No. It's, and uh, I think like when I take this off and I look at the back of this and I look at this, you know, the rotor, you know, moving around and all like, like it's fucking mechanical. Yeah. Like it's totally mechanical. And there's no battery in it or no yeah. storage of electricity, right? So only mechanical energy is it's like a little crank generator in there. Yeah. It's using the mechanical energy to generate this tiny amount of electricity and then it uses that to to regulate itself. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Yeah. It's this is, it's cool. It's a great watch. <laughs> and sapphire is a cool bezel material. Yes, so it is. um so business at Grand Seiko, so I hear from people besides you actually is very good. Uh, I hear that too. My friend who <laughs> my friend who's at watches of Switzerland says that yeah. um, of the all the brands they sell, Rolex, Patek, and Grand Seiko are the three hottest right now. And Harriet Manfredi, when I saw him when I was in New York last week, I said, "What's selling?" And he was like, "You won't believe it, Grand Seiko." And I was like, "I do believe it." Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, that's impressive. That's great. Yeah, I got to spend a lot of time at uh, Watches of Switzerland's new flagship store in Soho. Yeah, it's sick, and, right? Yeah, no, it's amazing. So that was uh, that was a really unique experience for me because it's a very different atmosphere uh, than you know what I'm used to, let's say. But uh, you know, now I'm traveling around a lot and I'm going to various retail partners, all of our boutiques, um, and you know, I'm seeing the success of Grand Seiko, and it's just like you know, wow, because I've. I've been into these things for a long time. Yeah, but uh, it's really remarkable to see how far it's come. Well, you don't, you don't. There's not a lot. Um, people want, I think, authenticity, but they also want something that's new. And so you can typically only have one or the other. But I think that um, people are uh, starting to look outside the Swiss and realizing that, like, oh shit, like the Germans, they've got some things going on over there, yeah, um, and also, absolutely. and also the Japanese. You know the fact that they're verti- that you're vert- ver- vertically integrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that thing. It's not like kind of like a me too thing. It's like there's innovation there. There's you know there's a story behind it. 
there's weather outside the fucking mountains. And, <laughs> what? and now it's in our watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, uh, Basil this year, Basil World for you guys, you uh, you brought the case. You got We got all the new watches, right? Yeah, I mean, like, just about everything that was introduced at Basel is here. So what, let's, uh, we saw, the, what, do we, what do we got? Bring so, it out. Let's let's let's, right. let's hit the let's hit the road and uh, and let's go through some it, of these right? watches. Like yeah. what's new? So we we showed this one already. This is a hand carved platinum iteration of the snowflake. We're only making thirty, and everything is done by hand. Even the carving like, like in the, the case dial. is snowflaked. Yeah. So the dial is the snowflake texture, but in a silver tone as opposed to white. You have a platinum case that is hand carved to mimic the dial of the snowflake. And so there's a little bit of a historical throwback to that. Like there's some vintage pieces that had uh, that were made actually in the same fashion. And uh, this has our newest movement. And unfortunately, the, there's no movement in this thing, so I can't really show you what the movement looks like. But that creator that you it's just saw, it's a hand wine spring drive. It's a new though, hand yeah. wine spring drive. Yeah. So it's it's very visually similar, but we've done some enhancements Holy to the shit. movement finishing. This cr- dude, this creator doesn't look like much, but it is heavy. Yeah, this is a heavy. <laughs> this is like a the density of this watch case. Is yeah, extraordinary. It's, it's got some heft behind it. Wow, for, for a little guy, right? That's crazy. Okay, so, so the prototype you're seeing is very light because it's you know it's a prototype. It's not really platinum. It doesn't have a movement inside, but you know it gives you an idea of how it wears at least, and you can see the style. Um, this second hand is going to be blue in the final product. Like, there's a lot of things that mm-hmm. aren't uh, perfect about these prototypes, but at least you get to kind of see them hands on. Yeah. So this is 30 pieces being made, and because of the hand craftsmanship that goes into it, you know, it's seventy six thousand dollars. <sighs> so yeah. the the price is the highest Grand Seiko that we've ever made. This Under- is the most expensive Grand Seiko ever. Yes, and uh, you know we do have Crador models that are right. half almost half a million dollars. Stop but- it. Oh yeah, yeah. What do the half a million dollar Crador look it's, like? Uh, it's it's actually very different from Grand Seiko. Really? It's do quite, you have a reference number? I'm yeah, sure uh, you do. Look, look up Crador Fugaku. So F U G A. No, I, all I had to type was Fu. Fu. <laughs> Wait, let me, let me make sure I get a big enough image that the folks will be happy with it. Uh, all right. This yikes! This thing's out of control. Oh I mean, my it's, god! Every, you know what? If with enough money, anyone will buy something that is just completely lunacy. L- complete lunacy. What? <laughs> this is okay. Oh my god! How do I even describe this? This is like one of those traditional Japanese paintings. Yes. Brought to three dimensional life, made out of rubies and gold. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so the waves, something. yeah, it's it's based on uh, Hokusai's painting, The Great Wave off Kanagawa, and so uh, we have one artisan that does all the hand engraving for this piece, and there's a lot of hand engraving. Yeah, no shit. Uh, so three dimensional waves. His name's yeah. Kiyoshi Terui. He's been yeah. uh, he's been with the with the family since 1970. Wow. So, and would the yeah. person who the, who does the would is does he do? Um, well, forgive the, what's probably the wrong term, the, the watchmaking portion of it, or does he just make the... Engravings. The engravings. Yeah, yeah he so. only does the engravings. Right. And I actually have one of his uh, engraved pieces here. Really? Too. Yeah, let's so see, this, let's, is, this is an engraved... Let's, get, uh, let's see that. How much was it, Was this other, that crazy thing we just... So that's 460000 Yeah, okay, okay. What You know what that is, though? They're that eight. It's like... A, no, <laughs> it's... That <laughs> level is um, at the up... It's the same as the upper echelon of the shotguns. It's you're buying the the engraving is the thing. Yeah, you know it's also I mean? a tourbillon. Uh, yeah, no, which, uh, yeah, you, you can know, it's tell got a lot time. of things going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, it's got but. it does. But at but at four hundred thousand, you know, you're buying that one famous engraver's time and life skill to make that. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? Okay, what is going on here? This is the most outrageous Grand Seiko I think I've ever seen. Yeah, so this is uh, well, this is, is a this crater. A crater? Oh, this okay, is yeah. a crater. Yeah, we'll only do really like these uh, really elaborate like skeletons uh-huh. and all these hand engravings. You really see only in the crater line. This is more of like crater, like the sort of experimental artsy pieces. Is it's that very sort of artsy. Thing? Yeah, okay, that's yeah. what I like to describe it as. I mean, more more dress watch and more artistic craft. Yeah. So this is uh, inspired by the spring. You know, we're still we're still dealing with nature here, but uh, the cherry blossoms blooming in spring. You have, you know, uh, he actually. So, 
the the gentleman Truy who does a lot of these engraving pieces, uh, engraved pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a couple of apprentices now as well because he's got to be getting ready to retire soon, right? Yeah. So um, he's developed his own techniques, his own tools that he doesn't need to like buff out after he engraves. So he's actually he like just, polishing while he, he just cuts. produces a finished piece on the first pass, and it looks like diamonds in, it, in there. You know, so that's sick. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're at this point, you're. You're paying for this guy while he's still working, and it's like get it now because pretty soon, you know, it might have his his name on it, or it might be from the school of, but it's not going to be his hands. Yeah, and so um, the pocket we have a pocket watch that we introduced at Basel that uh, is you know is engraved with his. Uh, it's kind of a logo, so it's uh, you know. What's it called? Uh, that one will be the. It's a Creator 45th anniversary. Pocket watch. I'm trying to type as fast as I can. Is there that, we that go. it? Yep, that's it. Oh boy, it's exceptional. So get the image. Right yeah. at the bottom of the tree, there is this little uh, T for Terui. Oh wow. That's I the mean that's, is, is this master. the back? This is the back, right? That's the back, yeah. You know, I really do like it when it's the back. You know what I mean? I'm not sure I want to look like look at some a, a diorama to tell yeah. the time, <laughs> but when it's the back and it like is kind of like your little secret back there, then I'm then I'm really about it. That's amazing. Yeah, he's only uh, these are ten pieces total. So how wait? So how, there's eight of these cherry blossom pieces? No, there's eight of the tourbillon, the, oh, okay. the fugaku. Oh yeah, how about this this one that we have this here? This one is going to be continuing production. It's just really small. Production, oh cool. So, how yeah. many watches can this guy make a year? Uh, that's a good question. I, I have no idea. Now, the assembly on it is very limited, too, because this movement's only 1.98 millimeters thick, so it's yeah. it's something very wow. uh, very special. Show, you tighten show, the screw too the, much. Show the movement. It's yeah. very cool. I'm, you're, like, touching things with gloves. Do, should I put a glove on? No. Nah, no. Nah, this is <laughs> cool. just so, like, there's just not habit. my fingerprints all over these things. It's very pretty from in. the back. That's lovely. And that's a hand wind mechanical? or sp- That's a spring drive. That's a mechanical. That's a mechanical, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm learning things. No, no. no. <laughs> so, listen, we make all sorts of different movement types, so it's, right. it, you know it's a lot to deal with. All right, what else is new? So, what else is new? Like the hand carved piece, we're going to have a continuing production model that's going to have the carved dial. That's like that's the this is the quote regular version of that piece. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, I mean, in, in irregular, but you know, this is uh, this look, is going to be mean, for those watching the video. Like, look what happens as I move my hand across. Just like the way the light moves across the the faceted indices is extremely rad. Yeah. Just like rock it back and forth a little bit, Joe. Like get a little some like reflections going on it. Like I love when I'm sitting in like the back seat of an Uber and I'm wearing it, taking making reflections on the doors of the Uber. Like that's one of my favorite things to do with this I watch. Know. Yeah, it's uh I, I do the same thing. This is a dress watch though. Yes. This is fully dress watch, and it's about Hand wind spring drive and thinness, really, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did the hand wind spring drive to you know kind of pay tribute to those first ones I was talking about from 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we got a longer power reserve. Cool. So this is a new innovation too in the movement. I'll show you one of the. So these are the micro artist pieces. These this one's fifty seven thousand. Um, you know, platinum nine fifty. They are again. not moving down market, are they? No. <laughs> well, I'm starting with the big stuff. And yeah, okay. realistically, I mean, for Basel, we introduced like the big guns. Like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. that's what you saw. But we have other products that are well, coming after, out. After we talk about the next big gun, I want to talk about these new sport watches. Yeah, because they so, are controversial, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little, but you know, it's it's a uh, different. All right, design. what is this? So this is uh, this is an actual movement. I have one sample that has an actual movement. So this is a nine R thirty one spring drive caliber. All right, it's just introduced this year. It's hand wound, but we've managed to get it from forty eight hours to seventy two hour power reserve. Oh, nice! And that's the thing. Like Grand Seiko didn't have a hand wind spring drive because the power reserve was never long enough. You know, it's uh, it, yeah. They, we have they pride themselves on very long, <laughs> long power reserves. Mine run. This is a full. Th- I think this is seventy two hours. It this is a full three days. Yep, it is. It certainly is. So that's like the the rule for spring drive, right? Is three day power reserve minimal. Yeah. So we did something really unique. There's one barrel, and typically, you know, you want to get a long power reserve. There's multiple barrels. Mm-hmm. In this instance, it's two main springs, but one barrel. So they're stacked on top of each other and they unwind simultaneously. Oh, it's it. I, I've so is it done just a double the torque and it I, and it unwinds it slower. So yeah, we reduce the torque uh, essentially on the spring. So each spring is is like thinner and longer, oh. but they work together to increase the torque. All right. So that's really uh, where it comes into play. So like having two 
two small batteries instead of one big one? Would that be kind, the equivalent? Yeah, I guess. Maybe. Kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, um, you know, what is awesome about these pieces is they all have power reserve on the back. Yeah. There's no date, and they're thin, which a lot of people have been asking for in Grand Seiko. For so thinner stuff? Thinner stuff. You know, I mean, it I don't very, mind. It is very thin. Yeah. I don't mind. You know, I mean, I'm wearing the chronograph that's even thicker than yours. Yeah. And I don't mind it, but, you know, some people want thin dress watches. And yeah. We never really had this that. This is very Grand cool. Seiko. The snowflake dial with the gold everything else is yep. pretty rad. I like that. This is looks really expensive though. How much is this? Is this it, it'll be twenty five thousand. Oh, okay. So you know, not super expensive, but we're gonna make a steel version that's limited edition too, with the same movement. And so the steel one has a new dial type, which has this like, sunburst pattern. That's like the. Uh, it looks like a. Well, I don't want this to come off racist, but like a Chinese fan. Yeah, like a, well, you know, maybe Japanese Japanese yeah, right? fan. Yeah, Sorry. so Japanese folding <laughs> fan, right? Yeah. So um, it's supposed to kind of emulate, you know, nature again with the sun passing through the tree branches, you know, sunburst uh, type pattern, um, all three dimensional. Really, I mean, it's a stunning dial in person. Pictures Super really cool. haven't done it justice, but um, we're only making seven hundred in the stainless steel piece, so and it'll be seventy six hundred. Awesome. Yeah. So All right. Good let price me see point. this. Let me see these the sport watches that look like the MGM Grand Casino. Well, we'll, see, well, and this is this is kind of the idea, right? This All is, right. This is the uh, this is the line. This is the Tokyo line, as it's been kind of like uh, we call it internally. Let's We've say. seen pictures of these things. Yeah, and they are awesome. Like they're pictures again do not do it justice but it's one of the most complex cases like it's super flat and very very beveled so there's like a lot of really crisp corners a lot of angles so a very angular case the most that we probably ever made um Ooh. we're doing it in rose gold we're only this making extender 100. on the on the steel bracelet or on the titanium is it titanium yeah, titanium. yeah the titanium. extender on the bracelet's pretty cool yeah and it's not a dive watch either so we have that and it's an open case back and 200 meter water resistance which is surprisingly it's a first for grand seiko huh. but um yeah i mean this is a new sports series something funky they're all limited edition but i mean the way they wear on the wrist is all right so i will cool. say <laughs> that a i really like so check this out wait i want to go to this camera so Here's, when you put it on, when you open it up, it has it has like a ratchet, yeah, like Uh-oh. like a dive watch, right? And so I don't I don't know best. Maybe you can can show the extender under the camera real quick. Sorry, That's under that under one. This one, yeah. And when you put it on, you basically you close the clasp and then you can like shove it tight like a zip tie, and then it just stays. So like close that and then yeah and then yeah right. So that actually is really ingenious because you, you have this sort of on the fly micro adjuster. Yep. And like you don't have to take it off either. Like this little security clasp um, is the release lever. So oh, you push it, it backwards oh, okay. and you can pull it out. Oh, that's rad. And then it locks when you when you're not pushing oh, back on it. That's perfect. So that's a really good idea. I like that very much. Yeah, and it's been in our dive watches for a while, at least the style of clasp. So you I know, guess it's something new I guess for mine this. Man didn't get that one. But um, no, the chronographs don't really typically have it. Yeah, but but I don't know. It's this this case is it is different. It's aggressive. It's right? very aggressive is a good word. It is aggressive. It's um, a, it's like it's, a lion. It you does, know, it's not it's not meant to be uh, weak. <laughs> I mean, is it intentionally? Is lion? Is that what they're going for? Because it, I'm t- the MGM casino thing was is what was, came to your mind. That's, yeah, that's amazing. Like it, it seriously is inspired by a lion, and and you know Grand Seiko's emblem since 1960 has been the lion. So you know the very first Grand Seiko <laughs> had one on the back, and today it's so like funny that it's a lion. Yeah, so like everything about it has some like tiny influence from. It, uh, a lion, like let's say the case design from the head of a lion. The dial is inspired by the lion's mane, so you have we call it a lion's mane dial. You know, very simple name to remember. Throw this one under the camera. I'm yeah. wearing the chronograph, but this one, this one is the uh, the GMT. No, no GMT, oh, sorry, but no, uh, oh, yeah, right. just, I apologize. Just a three hander. No worries, no worries. Um, I thought it was going to be a GMT too because of the bezel. So the, the, these have the sapphire bezel, which is similar to what my my older one has, but yep. um. The uh, what's the deal with this dial with the brown? 
so the brown is like kind of uh, greenish brown is, like I said, it's inspired by the lion's mane. So you have this kind of uh, irregular pattern, let's say, very fibrous, right, like the, like the hair. So that's really the motif that they're going for with, with this style type. So in titanium, we're going to make the chronograph, which you have on your wrist, and then we have the three hand with the power reserve. Uh, we're going to make 500 of each. And uh, the, the price on the chronograph will be... 12,900 and then the three hand will be 10,600. Can I make the joke that I read on the internet and they called it the shit flake dial? Which I thought was really, really <laughs> <So> funny. <laughs> which is a really, hey man, which I even laugh, if but... you like the watch is very funny. Um, I'm not sold personally on this case, but no, but okay. I could definitely, uh, it's funny that you that they were going for Lion and my thought was, was MGM, MGM Casino. Yeah. No, that's, I that's that's like perfect. I mean, that, listen, that's what they were going for. Even if it's not your I wonder taste. if someone, someone who works at Grand Seiko went to Vegas and came back and was like, got it. <laughs> um, they're, they're cool. I mean, they're definitely like, I put these in the same category as I put Lexus's new vehicles. I'm glad they didn't keep it conservative. I'm glad they went for it. The new, it's not really for me this time around, but like, by all means, keep trying new stuff. Yeah, and we've been doing these like traveling shows right now with all the Basel product, and yeah. like when people are seeing these in person, the response has been amazing. So, it does like it does wear well, it does fit yeah. well, and that clasp is amazing. Um, but that case hasn't grown on me yet. The, I don't think Grand Seiko has done their Nautilus or their Royal Oak yet. I think they have it in them, but I don't think that. And granted, either of neither of those was like a super smash immediately. Yeah. But yeah. like, I don't think there's nothing that I, maybe the snowflake. But but I'm not sure. I'm waiting for but them I mean, to have like a super duper sports watch, right? Super duper sick sports watch. I love this the chocolate dial thing. The chocolate dial rules. So this um, is uh, this is the Grand Seiko eight day that you're looking at. Yeah, right? let's throw one of those yes. under there. Let's talk about eight days is a long time. It's a yeah. very long time. Um, and talking about like spring drive, right? The earliest prototypes of spring drive, they could barely get, you know, like four hours out of. So getting a, a good duration out of it was a big challenge. So to have an eight day today is pretty impressive. Um, it's three barrels, but they all unwind si simultaneously. So kind of like that two mainspring yeah. single barrel system, it works in the same concept. Uh -huh. um, but three, three different barrels for this one. Um, the dial's inspired, again, by nature. So you have uh, we call the Stardust dial, which is supposed to look like the stars in you know, the, the winter sky in, in Nagano where they make the watch. It's uh, a little twinkly. It is twinkly. So yeah. this is the first dial that we've made. It's a textured dial, though it's really hard to see. Um, it reflects light at multiple angles. Now, typically, light reflecting off the dial, mm -hmm. like these different textures that we do, like it, all the light kind of goes in one way. This is more like a disco ball effect, right? Like what happens if I shine like a little flashlight on it? Can I can we get an effect? Yeah, it might be easier with What's the, the best way to do that? with the platinum at least. Telling, I'm just looking at this uh, image you got up on the screen, and it looks like it might be. We can try with what? Oh uh, wait, you know what's funny? That's odd. My flashlight. Oh, because I only have three percent battery. It won't let me use. Oh, there we go. Here we go. All right. Oh yeah. No, that 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 moves. Yeah, it's fully twinkly and mildly disco ball-y. Yep, exactly. The the <laughs> wow. platinum when, version. When you move the light around, that looks incredible. All yeah. right, let's do it with the platinum. The platinum's dun, easier dun. easier to see for sure. Platinum looks very subtle in the in the standard light. Oh, I need to. It's a little it's a little, little bright. Dark. Yeah, it's a little bright. Uh, I think. Nah, the light might be too I bright. I was wrong. I think I, I think what I think we can't it? get it dark enough <laughs> in a darker room, maybe. But yeah, so eight days—that's a long time. And that's a hand wind eight days. So hand wind eight days. How long days. does it take? Does, so, does, so because it's the three barrels stacked together, does that mean you don't have to wind it for a thousand years to wind <laughs> it up? Because normally, like an eight day, like I had a I had an IWC Big Pilot. It was mm. eight day. And it was a giant watch. Um, but if you actually wound it from dead, like it took like, I don't know, a hundred wines to probably get it to, to eight days. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a hundred and change. It's like, I think 120, like a, uh, if I remember correctly, not full rotations of the crown, but uh, that's about where it was for me to go from zero to full. Really? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it depends on, uh, you know, how, <laughs> how much you're actually turning the crown. Yeah, yeah. So... 
But uh, spring drive, I mean, is very efficiently hand wound. I mean, it, it winds up very quickly compared That's to true. a traditional. Mine mechanical. does want this watch winds up uh, pretty quick. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So what I love about these though is that the the movement design is actually a map. I'm sorry. It's a map of. So where do you think it's a map of central Japan? It's a map of Nagano. What, so let me uh, what part? Yeah, let me let me find a map of yeah yeah. You're gonna use steal the, use a screwdriver, tool. right? Totally. Yeah. All right. So. There's a little hand engraved logo right here. This is the Micro Artist Studio logo. So this is where they do all the comp- like top tier hand finishing. Uh, guys uh, on uh, with various blogs and stuff like that have called this the best movement finishing for fifty grand that you can buy. All right. So the the work of the Micro Artist Studio, especially that Creator. People love these porcelain dial Creator. So these are the same guys making that. They make this little hand engraved logo is their logo. The beveled edge of this one piece bridge that we have is supposed to depict mount fuji so you have the the peaks uh, the peak of mount fuji you have the rising sun you have the power reserve indicator is supposed to be a lake right near the the factory lake sua and then you have the jewels and the screws are supposed to be the sparkling city lights of the city of sua so if you're at the micro artist studio and you're looking at mount fuji you're going to see all that in between Oh, so you're, so you're not looking at a map. What you're looking at is basically a Bob Ross painting yeah. <laughs> from outside of the window of one of the uh, yeah exactly of the yeah. That's so, crazy. Dude. Yeah, that's what you know. I'm like that. I call it a map because you know if you're lost in in Nagano, you you look at oh, the back you can of your find watch Mount Fuji and you'll find yeah you movement. know where Mount Fuji is. It's easy to see. That's very funny. Yeah, it looks like the Grand Tour of Mongolia map they just used on the last <laughs> episode. That's sick. All right, we are almost out of time. What uh, do we have? Anything else to show before we go? I see, I see that a gold flaked dial. What do I see over there? So we have this one. Yeah, what is that about? Oh, so this is the U.S. limited edition in eighteen karat rose gold. Whoa! So uh, this is our iconic forty four GS design, and you know the the nine points of Grand Seiko style. Sorry for the shakiness. I really ah. was trying to get it darker. Let me see. But those nine points you were talking about. This is the design that that was implemented to like the, when we made the first 44 GS in 1967 uh-huh. those were the nine traits that that came along with that watch and so this is that iconic design kind of modernized of course that's a little better so. but uh so this has a new dial type we call Kirazuri which is inspired by woodblock prints like we were talking about with the Crator yeah. the the Fugaku so the the ukiyo-e woodblock prints of Japan if you see one that has like a sparkling effect in the background that's called Kirazuri. So it's it's something uh, you know that we were trying to emulate in this dial. And if you look at the dial really close under a loop or something along those lines, you'll see it's almost like a, a linen texture. But Are there any of these these guys left, Joe? Do you know? Hey, I know that wrist. I, I, that I was just with this guy this morning. Stop actually. it, really? RCB. Um, <laughs> here's this one. This was the U.S. limited edition with the Kirazuri, which I also almost bought. <laughs> yeah, um, it those, was a little small for me. It's forty. Yeah, it's so. a forty, but it it wears a little closer to a thirty nine than a forty one. But um, if you are like normal thin person, it pro- it'll probably look great on you. But for me, it was a little small. But that blue dial rules. Yeah, that was killer. Yeah. Um, so this this we made five hundred and fifty eight in steel. We did uh, 50 in rose gold, and then we have a platinum version that we did 20 of. And what's cool is this platinum case is uh, the first time we've ever done the 44GS in a platinum case. And the majority of the reasoning behind that is because it's incredibly difficult to manufacture and Zeratsu polish, that that special hand finishing technique that we do. That's incredibly sick. Like, you have to be... Such a pimp! How much this thing's got to be? It's it's a uh, fifty three thousand, yeah. so it's up there. Yeah, that, but you have to be such a pimp to rock platinum. You're the only person that knows how awesome it is. And I know a lot of guys with you know they they got you know a lot of money, and they prefer to buy platinum, white gold because of the subtlety of it. You cannot believe. This is like a thirty-eight or something. No, it's a forty-two. That's, For, forty also. No, well, oh, it's a forty. 40 is it? also? Yeah. <laughs> you cannot believe how heavy something like this could be. I mean, if it had a platinum bracelet or something with it, or a white gold bracelet, this be, thing would weigh two hundred grams probably. Yeah, and you'd be dragging your knuckles across the floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's amazing. I probably, I think I just fingerprinted the dial. Nah, let's no. end. Uh, let's end the show on the gold version of. 
the watch I almost bought when I came to see you the first time, the Big Pusher Chronograph, which is a really iconic. We got, we were just we have a pile built up here. <laughs> that's the that's the best up. way. This is a big pile. Uh, the Big Pusher Chronograph uh, is a really really cool piece. Um, it's aggressive. Yeah, it's a it's you um, know I mean you know Grand Seiko doesn't have a, a huge sports collection, but this has always been like the signature to me of the sports collection, and it's because you know this design, these big pushers, were influenced by a, a stopwatch, handheld series of handheld stopwatches we made for the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. Right, we were the official timekeeper for the first time that year, and they wanted to do something awesome, and those pocket watches are a big part of the reason why we got the spot as the official timekeeper. So I just bought mine. You know, I got this back in December with the black dial stainless steel. I, you know, that was it, actually the one I was looking at. This is a black dial steel. Yeah, this is it, a gold uh, with a white dial. Yep. But um, throw the black dial next to it uh, because the black dial steel, I think, is a great is a great look. Yeah. How much was how much was the black dial steel again? The black dial and steel is eight thousand two hundred. Okay. The that's the actually a pretty good. I'm sorry they don't. They're kind of big, so they don't really fit in the frame. <laughs> but I think the black dial steel is a great value. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and it's a, and it's it's recognizable as a Grand Seiko instantly for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a uh, it's a very complex movement. You know, it's chronograph GMT with vertical clutch and column wheel, and uh, it has 416 components. Like, you're getting into grand complication territory with the quantity of components. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, super reliable. I, I love this thing, and I've wanted it for many years, and I'm finally uh, and finally wearing it and abusing it. Aren't the um, collars on the big pushers, like, locks? Yeah. They, so lo- they make it waterproof or something? Exactly. It's 100-meter water resistance, and it has a little collar that kind of protrudes out and protects... You know, it goes under the lip of the pusher. So the way that it works is, like... Um, they developed this pusher system as like a camera shutter, right? You yeah. press it halfway, you brace for the event to start. As soon as you hear the gun go off for the race, you click the the button. Um, you don't need to be looking at the watch to know that it started. Yeah, right? That column wheel gives you a very distinct click. You can hear it. I mean, you don't even need to feel it, but you do. Um, so, you know, I mean, in terms of performance, you know, the spring drive is superior in accuracy to anything with a mainspring out there. There's no denying that. But, um, you know... It, in a chronograph, like it makes perfect sense to use spring drive, right? Because you're if you're using a chronograph for what it's intended for, which not many people do. Maybe you do, but not many. Uh, you know, it. This is like the ultimate yeah, chronograph. Yeah. To I use. do use chronograph. I use it as a kitchen timer. Yeah, I use okay. My well, chronograph in the kitchen all the time. Yeah. I don't time my car laps, my laps on a racetrack with one. I need. Uh, well, you don't need to, right? I typically <laughs> have my hands on the wheel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, that's a cool piece. And if you wanted a, 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 a definitely a standout, you know, if the, you wanted the, I'm wearing a Grand Seiko piece, I think it's going to be one of those, a snowflake or probably, oh, yeah. uh, the new MGM Grand Line. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, thank you for coming in. Dude, thank it was you totally for, my pleasure. Thank you Thanks for sharing for your, your time and bringing like, what is a lot gotta watches. be two million dollars in watches now that no, I think it's about not it. That much. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Fuck me. The case is where it's at. I'm not telling nobody what you're driving. <laughs> uh, double fisting uh, watches. Joe Kirk. That's uh, right. Follow him on Instagram. J O S E P dot K I R K. Uh, he is a great follow. He has uh, a lot of interesting details about Grand Seiko uh, and uh, what's going on with that brand. Um, Cameron, I think we'll be back <laughs> the next time we have a well, show. You know, I mean, hopefully he's back soon. I, I mean, hope it's he's back like soon. A, like he's a got long he's journey. probably got watches to make. Yeah, um, I think and he's so. got these patches going on. This he's he's got a he's trying to add to his repertoire. So they have these lovely uh, patch pouches which will hold uh, a, a watch, a strap, and a strap changing tool. So, you know, Very a watch cool. roll is a nice thing to travel with, but it pretty much screams, there's a watch in here! <laughs> and this is a, a very DL way to accomplish um, the same thing. Uh, do you want to plug anything else, Joe? I mean, the Grand Seiko US, at Grand Seiko USA Instagram is a, is a great place to check well, out. It's, uh, uh, you know, the official account of Grand Seiko I, USA. I follow so. them. I hope so. You know, I it's, do. It's, 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 there it's an important is. thing. There they is, but uh, Grand Seiko USA and the main boutiques. If you're in America, are New York, Miami, yeah, L.A. Yep, 
we're doing an event actually if you're around tonight at the uh, at, at the oh, boutique shit. on Rodeo Drive. We're gonna have oh, some shit. sushi and whiskey and I all that love good stuff. A Grand Seiko come, party. All come right, party maybe with we us, will come you know? by later. All I right, hope dude. so. Thank you, Joe Kirk, uh, and that's um, that's a primer on Grand Seiko. I hope you guys uh, appreciate that, and uh, we'll see you soon. It's the Watch and Listen podcast. Bye. <laughs>